Take me there. It's a classic sound. It is. Tube screamer. Tube screamer into the marshal using the iridium for the uh, marshal. Yeah. And this TS9 uh, I've had for a while and it came with three chips. It's a special magical mystery tube screamer. Well, you can change it with the chipset. So the op amps that are in it, um, from the time that Ibanez started building these, manufacturing these, there's been a number of different chipsets in them. You can search online for what chipsets went in which year from TS 808s to TS 9s to different variants of the Tube Screamer. Um, the one I set it on that's in this at the moment is um, Texas Instruments um, RC 4558P. Jeez, good memory. Yeah. <laughs> um, and from what I can gather, that um, is it's Malaysian manufactured Texas Instruments chip. Yep. Um, the the difference in some of them is a, a Japanese chip. It's the same um, number, the RC four double five eight, either a P or a D. Um, the eight oh eights had this particular chip in some of their variants as well. Right. So I don't know whether it's why I just settled on this one. It came with three different ones. We thought we might try out. This is going to be a great video. And see the difference that the three different chipsets make, or if they don't. All right, so I'm going to get Rod to write all this down so I can put the little graphic on the screen. Uh, yeah. But this is the first chip. Let's yeah. It's got a pretty harsh top end on it. Yeah. Through through the iridium, it's got a harsh top end. We've had to roll that back a fair way. And I normally have the tone sort of where you've got it, but um, probably back even towards nine o'clock. Yeah, it sounded really good, and then I mucked around with it, and now it doesn't. But that, that's all right. I mean, you <laughs> turn the gain up. I, I generally use it when it's pushing a slightly dirty amp anyway, and you get yeah. that, you know, that tube screamer mid-range cut through. So if you're going into a solo mode. Um, you just you're going, to, you're going to be heard. Um, so I'll I'll generally have the the gain down down a bit, um, the output level up, just to push things, and the the tone back a bit. But that seems to be compressing a little bit nicely into yeah. that into that Marshall um, tone from the Iridium. So tell the good folks which amp you're running into at gigs. At gigs, I'll run it into a, uh, a Fender Blues Deluxe yeah. um, for a start, um, and. Look, I'll have a, a blues breaker on that as well, and maybe a compressor. And orange, orange or a, a, squeezer, yeah. yeah, so there's um, three different stages of gain there. Sweet. Cool. Swap the chip over. Let's do it, and then come back. Yeah, done. All right. Through the magic of television. Yeah. Bang, we're fucking back. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> that didn't take long. That only took 15 minutes and oh. three times, and you said the F word a lot. <laughs> No, it didn't take that long, folks. It really didn't. All right, so here is the, the Japanese, the JRC 4th double five eight um, chip. Um, let's see if we can hear any difference. Do it. Yeah. <laughs>
right, so this time I turned everything up and I turned everything down and I played everything. There's some usable tones there across everything. Yeah, uh, as you find with a with a tube screamer. If you want to use it as a as a drive with with some you know with some hairy gain, or if you just want to use it to to boost what you've already got. So which chip was that? This is the the JRC four double five eight. All right, cool. Uh, that's pretty great. I it was, and I'm not teasing you for taking so long for changing the chip, but I can't remember what I can't remember what the other one was to compare it to. But I, I like that. That sounds good. Yeah. The first one sounded good. The second one sounds good. So, yeah, that one sounds good too. I can't really. You know, I different. can't. It was too long ago for me to compare them by here. Until but, um, until we AB them. Yeah. Yeah. I'll run them all together at the end of this yeah. demo. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Next one. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Boing. <laughs> All right. All righto. So this is the Toshiba TA7558 chip. Um, these came in TS9's post-85. Um, and let's see how it sounds. So, so if I actually bought this pedal, this is the chip that comes in it? Stock? Yes. Okay, cool. Oh, yes, pretty sure. But once again, you can search the whole... Um, uh, the, the whole lineage of, of Tube Screamers to see what chips were in... Um, TS-808 through to TS-9 through to TS-10 through to all the variants. No, I'm not researching that. I just want you to tell me. All right, let's go. It's hard to be certain because we're going through the iridium into the monitors here, not through an actual amp. Mm. But I can hear something in this one that doesn't particularly um, sound sweet to my ear as, as the other two. There's uh, there's something in the in the top end or the upper mids that isn't. It almost sort of sputtered there for for the beginning at, yeah. at the start. Of it. I don't know what you you took on it, but. Yeah, it sounds, I mean, it's, that sounds like a tube screamer to me. Okay. Where the other two sounded a bit richer and yeah, like they had a bit more, I don't know, almost like a harmonic content to them. Yeah. But the first one was really bright on the top. Uh, true. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. I like the second one the best. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that being said, yeah. I, in the live setting with the band, just chug away on my chords mm. while I'm singing where you, you actually do all the lead fancy stuff with all the different tones yeah and like we're really we're really cork sniffing here we're cork growing and cork sniffing so <laughs> we could be you know um, drinking our own kool-aid but um for this one i can tell a little bit different here cool but hey it's they're easy to pop in and pop out if you know what you're doing um remember static zap makes scrap so, <laughs> so be careful when you're uh, handling um integrated circuits yeah yeah absolutely yeah um, and if you're like me, you just wait for Rod to fix whatever you need done. Okay, That's it. I can do that too. <laughs> uh, right, um, I'm going to say thanks for watching and bye. And yeah. then I'm going to ask Rod some questions that you won't hear. Okay, everybody, here is how you swap the chips over the TS9. Sonic screwdriver. Talk to us, Rod. What are you doing? All right, what I'm doing here is I'm using my IC tweezers and I'm taking this bad boy out and easing it out gently, we're hoping. Nice and gently to avoid causing any carnage to the pin legs or any other components that are nearby. Uh, remembering that static zap creates scrap, as they say. 
So that's that one out. Deciding on which one to go back in. I'm gonna put this JRC back in because I like it. Pin orientation is uh, paramount. So you have gotta remember where the, the dot is locating pin one and you remember where that is just on taking the old one out. Oh. And if we get that bad boy back in. We are in. And it's a simple case of reassembling. Good job, Rod. Good job. So that is how you change the chips. Uh, it's actually really simple, and Rod's pretty handy with circuitry and soldering and everything electrical, so that Yay. was pretty awesome. Um, quick, easy, simple. Yeah. Uh, just be gentle with the chips, yeah? That's right. And what's that little tweezers you got? Um, it's particular, um, it's, a, it's an IC tweezer, so it grabs them where they should be grabbed, and... Uh, and they're easy to lift out uh, rather than prying in there with, with a screwdriver or things that you shouldn't do. That's easy. Yeah. Easy. So, yeah, three chips, three different tones. Um, I hope that was informative and I hope you enjoyed it. If you uh, enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and uh, leave a comment. Tell us if you've got an alternate chip we can put in there and try yeah. it out. Three chips. Chip, chip. Hooray. <laughs> oh, dear God. Let's go. Yeah. See you. Bye. See you.